Hello, everyone. It's been good to be with you again. Well, some of you may know, we're at the beginning of a sermon series focusing upon the prophet Jeremiah. This week, our title is Don't Believe the Lies. So let's begin with a reading from Jeremiah. And that's chapter 2, verses 16 to 22. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Well, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Why is this? Well, it's because he felt God's beating heart for his people. He knew they were listening to people who weren't working, walking closely with God. He knew they were being led astray by people who professed to be speaking God's will. Jeremiah warned them again and again, but they didn't like to hear what he was saying. When King Jehoiakim read what he was saying, he threw the scroll in the fire. They were all convinced that Jeremiah wasn't speaking the truth. Yet this was a time of great danger, so it was crucial that people were listening to God. The people of Judah were facing a real threat from Babylon, and in this time of uncertainty, were turning to prophets for guidance. They were listening to words of comfort, yet Jeremiah warned in verse 16, Do not listen to what these prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. These false prophets were telling the people what they wanted to hear, not what they needed to hear. They promised peace and safety when destruction and judgment were on the horizon. Sadly, the people were listening to the wrong messages and we know it ended badly as they were exiled into Babylon. What about us? Are we listening to the wrong messages? We live in a time where there are a lot of deceitful messages. Fake news, such as one that was showed of an elephant carrying a, a baby lion acro across a road. It was an April, uh, April Fool's joke, and people were taken in by it. It was amusing, but there are more dangerous messages out there. The world is full of disinformation, and there have even been reports of elections being affected by false information, and it's difficult to navigate to find the truth, something that we need to be careful of at the moment. And the rise of scammers trying to steal our identities is incredible, and they're becoming more skilled at it. The amount of fraud committed in the UK in 2023 was 2.3 billion, an astronomical amount of money. None of us are safe from lies, and the government has given advice on how to spot scammers and to protect ourselves. Well, just in case you don't know, never give your personal information or passwords to anyone. Your banks won't ask for it. They know it already. So often we can be caught out because we aren't alert. However, there are more subtle lies that we may listen to lies that take away our identity in Christ. Jesus calls the devil the father of lies in John 8, 44. And in 1 Peter 5, 8, Paul says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. 
he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. The devil is very subtle. There in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve are living a great life. No problems, plenty to eat, and they have a wonderful and close relationship with God. There are no boundaries except one. They could eat from all the trees in the garden but one. You must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will surely die. Well, in Genesis 3, 1, a crafty serpent came slithering into their lives. Did God really say? And then told Eve what would happen if she did eat from the forbidden tree. You surely will not die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And we know what happened next. Their relationship with God was broken. They felt shame and hid. Emotions that can, can be familiar to us when we listen to the devil instead of listening to God. <clears throat> the problem we have is that we don't often recognise that the devil is speaking to us. He's very subtle and he speaks in tiny whispers causing us to doubt ourselves. But the damage he causes is immense. I'm sure that many of us have had words spoken over us while growing up that affected our self-esteem. And these days, with the help of social media, it's much more prevalent and the effects can be catastrophic. Satan loves this. He loves it when we're diminished instead of flourishing, which is God's will for us. After all, he says in Jeremiah that God has a plan for us not to harm us, but to prosper us. But why is it that these seemingly little doubts take precedence over our thoughts? Well, Paul was aware of this danger as he writes to the Ephesians, in chapter 6, verse 10, where he tells them and us to take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. A helmet is designed to protect your head. As a Christian, the biggest battlefield is in your mind where much of the warfare you will fight takes place. When the enemy attacks, he usually attacks there because he knows if he can influence the way you think, he will influence the way you act. And it's easy to be lulled into wrong thinking. For example, when people preach a prosperity gospel promising wealth and health without the cost of discipleship, or when aspects of the worldview starts to erode biblical teaching. How do we respond to lies? Well, Jesus gave us a model when he went out into the desert for 40 days. Here the devil did his utmost to distract Jesus from the truth. Each time the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus responded by using the word against him. Satan said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Did you notice the seed of doubt he was trying to put into Jesus' mind? If you are the Son of God. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man must not live only on bread. He must also live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Quoting Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 3. And finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. If you bow down and worship me, he said, I will give you all of this. Jesus said to him, get away from me, Satan. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. And he was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13 in that. Jesus refused to be tempted or sidetracked. Remember, he'd just come from his baptism where God said to him, this is my son whom I love and in whom I am well pleased. Jesus knew his identity. It's interesting to see how much children flourish when they're encouraged, and it doesn't take a lot to discourage them. It's the same for us. God knows us and loves us, and he wants us to believe what he thinks about us. Someone once said, I cannot afford to have a thought in my head about me that is not in his. And that is true. 
God thinks we're amazing and sees our potential. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Think about it, wonder at it, believe it. This isn't about arrogance. True humility is knowing who we are in Christ and acting upon that knowledge to serve others, not only physically, but spiritually. So what lies are you believing? Is it, I'm not clever or brave enough to do what that person does? I'm not good looking, people don't like me, I am not worthy. And God is saying, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. Are you listening to him or are you listening to the devil when he whispers in your ear? Did he really say that to you? God knows what we're like and it's nothing new for someone to listen to the wrong voices. In the book of Judges, we find Gideon hiding from the Midianites in a wine press, press threshing wheat. When God asked him to save Israel, Gideon answered, how can I do that? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. Look what happened. Gideon led victory over the Midianites. When Moses stood on holy ground before the burning bush, the Lord said he would send him to Pharaoh to save the Israelites. Moses answered, Who am I that I can do that? No one will believe that you're speaking through me. Please send someone else. Moses did not know who he was. Do you know who you are? Do you know that you're a child of God? That he loves you more deeply than you can ever imagine? That he has a plan for your life? That he is with you and will never forsake you? That the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus from the dead, lives in you and wants to work through you? Do you know that you're powerful? Do you know that you can hear God? Do you know that you're worthy? Do you know that God says he's with you and will never leave you or forsake you? All this time I'm speaking, have you got another voice in your head saying, not really, I don't think I am a child of God. I fail God so often for him to really love me. I don't believe he has a plan for my life as I'm not worthy enough. I'm not sure if I have the Holy Spirit within me. I'm not powerful. Others are, but I'm not. I can't hear God. I'm not worthy. Who do you think is whispering in your ear if you're hearing these negative thoughts? Because it's not God. He wants you to rise up and be who he sees you can be. He wants you to flourish. He has a plan for you, every single one of you. Just imagine what it would be like if we all believed this. What an army of hope would arise. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We must learn to recognise who is speaking to us, reject the devil's lies and replace him with the truth of God's word. Only then can we live the way we were meant to live. Only then can his kingdom come. His will be done through us. If I see something I'm unsure about on social media, media, I often refer to Snopes, which has fact-checked the information. But we have a personal fact-checker. It's the Holy Spirit within us. Listening to him will give us the discernment we need. He will give us the assurance. He will comfort us. He will counsel us. He will say to us, Go on, do it. I am with you. Bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you think about us, for what you've done for us, the how much you love us, and that you have a plan not to harm but to prosper us. Help us in our unbelief, Lord. Give us courage. Give us your vision. Give us strength. Help us to be your witnesses here on earth so that your kingdom will come, your will be done. 
Amen. Too high.